Now, members of the National Assembly will suspend their recess and reconvene on Thursday to consider the 2020 revised budget. Clerk of the National Assembly, Mohamed Sani Omolori, made this announcement in a memo dated May the 26th. The lawmakers had suspended legislative activities for two weeks to celebrate Eid Fitir, and the Senate President Ahmed Lawan had warned that the holidays may be cut short to consider the revised budget as soon as communication was received from the executive. I am now joined by Public Affairs Analyst Kach Ononuju to take a look at all of this conversation. Good morning, Mr. Ononuju. Do we have Mr. Ononuju with us? Yes. I am here. Okay. We just wanted to be sure that you are. Uh, now let's go straight to the matter. The members of the National Assembly are suspending their recess to consider the 2020 revised budget. What's your thought on that? Well, uh, that has to do with uh, the COVID-19 and then the fall and reduction in earnings that we expect from the oil markets. So I believe that's just the reasons why the budget as previously passed is no more sustainable. And so there is a need for members of the National Assembly to look at a new reverse uh, template that will be given to them by the presidency. And the presidency will now need to re-evaluate its budget based on new benchmarks because the old benchmarks wouldn't be there since we expect the budget to be funded majorly from our oil earnings. And that takes me to my next question, which is uh, what areas should they exert more scrutiny, in your opinion, if we want to look at practicalities and specifics of what can work considering the time that we are in? Number one, cut down on corruption. The kind of corruption we are having in this government is mind-boggling. You can see what the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs was doing. Money being expended, or we are being told money is expended, and there are no data. You can't spend public money without records. We originally said that the elementary institution was to be stopped, and in this place there would be school feeding to put the children in the classrooms. Today. That minister has been talking about money she's been wasting, and we do not see where this is happening. The children have been taken off the streets in the northern states, and nobody's putting them back into the facilities that were originally built by the prepared for administration, and the children be cut out for in those facilities with the school feeding. This is where I think there is monumental corruption, and there are lots of other avenues where our finances are being whittled away. That, in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, is mind-boggling. Of course, the previous Chief of Staff, Baba Kiari, died, in his words, fighting corruption because he didn't trust anybody and he sought to do the jobs himself. And it was in doing that that he lost his life. So why don't this government pay heed and be serious to corruption? And then stop the money that is being stolen everywhere. You earlier talked about the NDDC. And I was quite shocked that NDDC warehouse turned out to be a warehouse that's actually owned by Senator Waboshi. So I think we should stop the unbridled corruption all across the country for us to be able to have money to put into really critical and demanding national issues where the people can benefit. All right. I, I just want to quickly clarify, though, that you know you made mention of the minister not giving updates or not giving data. Uh, on several occasions, I, I hear what you're saying, but on several occasions, she has come out to say, you know, this is what is going on. Having said no, that... No, no, uh, no. She has said, come uh, out to give her we, opinions. Opinions are not the facts. We, we, we will you are carefully. spending public money. Yeah, we when public carefully. money is being we spent, we facts, go with verifiable data. She I'm has sorry. given us her opinions. Her opinions do not match with data that are verifiable. This is public money. 
I, I, I hear you, but we will thread carefully not to make uh, allegations that we are not certain. I am not in making an allegation. I am speaking to the fact that it's already before the public. We shall and proceed. We cannot stop because now we do not have money. We need to stop the wastages and then plow the money into the places where we will see a lot of public. Good. All right. Even if they pulled through, I mean, the National Assembly with this revision, there is also the issue of implementation. How worried are you in the face of the gloomy global economic realities caused by COVID-19, of course, as well as recent crisis in the oil market? Well, I am looking internally. We have problem. The structures of governance do not enjoy the trust of the population. Previously, every single rhetoric about budget in this administration has never matched the reality when it comes to implementation. So I am very worried. I believe all they will do is get the rubber National Assembly to rubber stamp revised figures put down on paper. But I do not believe this government, as presently organized, will be able to actually provide the leadership we want in this particular trying time. Today, we are at a, at a junction where we've never been before in our country's history. I do not, I repeat, trust this government to be able to see us through this politely. All right. Let's look into the future a bit. Uh, what would a post-COVID-19 economy look like with all of this unpredictability that is surrounding us? One thing that is very, very sure is the virtual uh, life and the virtual world, uh, virtual maneuvers. We have seen the rise of companies like Zoom. I expect Zoom, uh, Microsoft Places, Microsoft Meetings, Cisco Meetings, and all to become implemented in classrooms. Uh, we believe that uh, quite a lot of things like business meetings, all those will now take place in a virtual mode. So I foresee investments by a lot of people in technology in regards to virtual meetings, but we need to also crack down, as I said earlier, on corruption. We need every penny that we can get in this country so we cannot continue to play Nigeria with the same old mindset we had now that we are challenged cash-wise, that we don't have money. We must set purpose to be very honest when we say we're fighting corruption. Public Affairs Analyst Dr. Kach Ononuju, thank you for spending your quality time with us this morning on the news. Thank you for having me.